and welcome back to a another video and as always if you enjoy these videos or, or anything on this channel feel free to subscribe so I've not played any games or anything I have gone through and I have um, done all the the training simulations to get them all onto the uh, I believe it's A or A star whatever it is um, just so they everyone trains up better so we will look through a couple of the the messages got a couple of, of offers for a couple of people some that I'm not sure about and some I am um, we had an offer for out of Ireland and I was gonna say yes but it's Arsenal and so I'm going to yeah, I just didn't reply um, now Lamella we had a deal in for and it was an exchange deal for Daniel James and again I figured I'm, I'm not gonna reply to it it's you know, Lamella's worth 20 mil. Daniel James is younger, is quicker, probably better, but I mean, it's Eric Lamella. I think maybe if we get another offer for someone that's not Man U, then possibly. Um, there was a, or is, a loan deal for Joe Hart, loan to buy as well, um, which I, f I think we're going to accept, if I'm honest with you. I, can't really see us using him. We have got two younger keepers anyway, Gazi and Aga and uh, the other young lad, so um, we're just going to accept everything at this point, just to offload someone. Um, I mean, he's you know, he's not really going to be doing any more for us. It gets him, well, some of our wages down, um, and then transfer fee of, of two and a half a mil, so that would be that'd be nice, I guess. It's also a offer for Davinson Sanchez, who I like him as a player, he's good in this game, and so that's a no-go. And then the one that I was um and ahhing about is the fact that Real Madrid wanted Harry Kane for 65 million. Okay, let me just... Uh, Oh, and Rodrigo. Ah, see, the thing is, Rodrigo is 19 years old. He's got a long way to grow. Um, what I will do, I'm not going to sell Harry Kane, but if they choose to give me £150 million, then, you know, maybe we do something with that. Let's just have a look. New transfer fee. Let's just go right up to, we'll say, 100, 130 mil. If they don't accept that, then uh, it's a no-go. No. Not happening. Hurricane's too good to be let go for that, for that kind of money. So, that was all of them. Aurier's position has been changed. The scouting's gone on as usual. We have got a youth squad update. Now, I'm still... Like this guy, 15 years old, he has got chance to grow, so I'll leave him for now again 16 year old 15 year old uh, we're gonna let this guy go I I can't really see him him doing anything major this guy top again 17 so we'll keep these there just for now there's no point in just getting rid of them just yet um, I hope you don't mind me asking you they're a bit worried of a club it isn't meeting their demands I mean, a bit of a weird thing to say, it's Tottenham. Are they ever expected to win anything? Um, right, so we have our first league game against Burnley. I believe it, we're away to Burnley. Um, the squad for this one is going to be, I think, a stronger squad. They have got not as fast in terms of players, but their squad is a, a lot more physical than a lot of squads so I think we will take off Matinho for this game and put on Sissoko just because he was asking to come on and then I also think we'll probably get on maybe Gibbs White on the bench and then the the new lad as opposed to out of Ioud everyone else I'm fine with I think we might put Sirkin on you know um yeah, and that is the the squad we're going to go for. 
Harry Kane and their son in there, obviously, and we are going to play the first game because it is more than likely going to be a big game. Right, and here we are. Hopefully, we can start off with a big win. Because, if I'm honest with you, the first five games of a season are usually the biggest ones. I mean, it gives a good indication of, of how a team's going to do that season. Obviously, the, at the end of the day, the first five games could be pointless but if you can you know if you can start off on the, the front foot then you can do well Kane oh Kane got in a naughty bit of space there fortunately the referee started to come out in purple today and their kits also look kind of purple so that could be quite frustrating let's hope I don't try and pass to a ref oh no Ooh. awful defending right and uh, you know as a Tottenham supporter myself, I feel like we should touch on it. This is uh, <laughs> this is being recorded about three days after um, we got knocked out of the Europa League. Now it wasn't Champions League, I get that, but it was Europa League. It was an expected win. It was the easier of the draws. Um, don't get me wrong, they played well. They they did play really well, but uh, yeah. It shouldn't have been, you know, a loss like that. We shouldn't have gone out. The players just look like they, they could not be... Ooh, okay. Players look like they just couldn't be bothered to play. You know, there was a couple of players that did look half decent, but... <sighs> Honestly, even just thinking about it now, man, get gets me stressed. Oh, it's a great goal as well. It wasn't even by us, just a great goal. See, that's what happens when you reminisce on, on Tottenham. If you support Tottenham, this is this is the roller coaster you go down. A few great games, you start thinking you're going to win the league, you start thinking you're going to win everything, and then all of a sudden you realise, oh, it is Tottenham. And they do spurs things up whenever they can. It was just, I don't know, again, it shouldn't have... Go on. Oh. It, it shouldn't have gone the way it should. There was no reason we should have let three goals in. Defensively awful, offensively awful, just everything, just everything was bad. And the simple fact is that we deserved it. I, You know, people blame Mourinho for that and say, well, tactically, he's been outdone. He wasn't outdone tactically. His tactics were, were the same as they've always been, just not as defensive. But this is the thing that I laugh at. People say, oh, he's too defensive. And it's like... Okay, so we clearly didn't go defensive. We went a lot more, you know, attacking than we, we have done before. And this is what happens. We let in three goals. And that was almost Mourinho saying, look, okay, we'll, we'll do it how everyone else wants me to do it. And, and look what happens. It just, he knows the defenders can't be trusted. He knows the attackers, you know, apart from Son and Kane, can't fully be trusted. I'm going to take a free kick, you know, just for the sake of it. We've got Gareth Bale on it. It's been a while since I've actually taken a free kick, so this could be uh this could be interesting. No. Um But yeah, Mourinho knows what he's doing. He's won to in every club he's gone to and at the very least he should have just done you know, what he wanted, as opposed to what the critics wanted or the fans wanted, I'll watch boring dead football all day long if it means we get some kind of cup, and he should have done it. So, yeah, he is to blame for that. Part of it, I guess, for, for not just listening to himself, but at the end of the day, it's the player's fault for that game. Absolutely, I, I can't I can't blame him. Honestly, you know, he's been blamed for so much, and I've I've also blamed him. I've said that I'm I'm kind of sick of playing these players and not giving these a chance but he's given Deli Alley a chance he's given Gareth Bale a chance and yes they show up in some games but that game in particular was a good example of, of how you know they don't always show up and I honestly let's just get this away real quick honestly as a Tottenham fan you, you can't I don't think blame Mourinho I think if you want to put blame somewhere it should be on every single one of them players who played just awfully who didn't put the shift in they should have done you know and that goes for, for Harry Kane that goes for every single player that played even five seconds of game time deserved to be criticised because it was awful 
it really was. And don't get me wrong, Lloris, I don't think, deserves as much criticism because a couple of the goals that they put in were very nice goals. You know, any other day, you're not going to get Oblak saving them. You're not going to get De Gea saving them. You're not saving them. That's just how good they were. But at the same time, oh, Aurier's in here. Let's just knock it up there, please, Kane. Thank God. Decent goal. Aurier's been super offensive today, you know, attacking wise, he's been very good. Um But yeah, it's it's goals that we're gonna be put in regardless, but at the same time, defenders need to 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 get people off the ball better. They actually need to, you know, try and stop people from getting into them areas. Whereas at the minute they don't seem to be doing it. And main culprit, you know, Davidson Sanchez, Eric Dyer is also a big liability and it's annoying when we've got players like Tanganga, who I outright prefer to any other centre-back we have. Not because he's maybe better than Alderweireld or better than Sanchez, you know, technically. He just has more spirit, and when he loses a ball or messes up, he actually gets it back. He fights for it, same as uh, same as Roden. Roden deserves to start. Him and Tanganga, I think, should be our main centre-backs. Again, not as experienced, maybe not as good either. Oh, I tried to do one of them thing I know you click a button and target a run and all that. Um, but yeah, they are just, in my eyes, the, the best choice. Big problem is, as well, we haven't got a competent right back. And it's, it's so frustrating. We bought Doherty, and I was so over the moon when we got him, because the Wolves played exceptionally well. Putting in assists, a few goals here and there. And then, he just didn't perform at all. And then Aurier started becoming like, I don't know, prime right back. He, he's over here playing like Kieran Trippi in the World Cup. And I'm thinking, okay, we might have just kick-started Aurier's career. And then all of a sudden, Aurier just stops sometimes. It's like he'll have a, an amazing game. Like, un, unplayable game. And then he'll have a game where he plays like, you know, a Sheffield United, you know, 16-year-old right back who's who's just come out of the academy is it's absolute madness and I just wish we'd actually buy someone that we need I don't don't care about buying attackers we don't need a new striker you know there's all this talk as well about Vinicius Junior not going to be signed on a permanent deal for the fee if that, I mean if that doesn't happen I don't agree necessarily that he's worth the 30 odd mil 30 40 mil whatever that is on him I would happily have him for 20 mil though He's proved himself in Europe. He's recently proved himself in the Premier League. He's a decent player, 26 years old. Kane's going to get injured. Son's going to get injured, as we saw. And and he is a striker, for God's sake. I also don't agree with keeping Bale if it means we can't sign defenders. If, if it's a choice between keep Gareth Bale and his ridiculous wages and then not sign any defenders or just get rid of Bale, send him back, but sign two defenders... Well, I'll tell you now which one I'm going to pick, you know, and it's going to be the defenders any day. Oh, come on. It's it's not right for the club to be run this way, you know. And you look at, uh, at Chelsea, they got a new manager in. Manager knows what he wants, knows what he's doing, and is saying, you know, these are the players I want to play. Maybe not the players he should be playing. Or he, he, a bigger example, PSG. They, they've got Pochettino, you know, who as a Tottenham fan absolutely adore him amazing manager and he's gone in there and he's not said right we're going to be playing uh, this guy this guy and this guy because they're big names he said right we're going to give these guys a chance and and they're repaying him you know in game time Moyes Keane has, has played really well actually and you know another manager might not have played him because he's young and might have played I don't know a Cardi or you know any of the other plethora of I'm sure PSG players that can probably go in strike for a bit but Pochino knows what he's doing and the club so far has faith in him to do it but for Tottenham it's like no faith at all we are also going to get Gibbs White on there's just no faith at all in Mourinho, you hear all these reports lately of, you know, the dressing rooms getting tired of the way he trains the players, and I think, getting tired of the way they're trained, if you get trained, even if it's, I don't care if it's Harry Kane, and he's been told, look, we're not doing shooting practice today, we're going to learn how to defend, just listen to him, 
it is one of the best managers of all time. So why wouldn't you just say, okay, you know what, you clearly know what you're doing. And, and listen to him, maybe if the players did that a bit more, instead of complaining, instead of just not putting effort into games because they don't like the way they're being trained, maybe if that happened, Tottenham, you know, would have done something. Because people were easy to praise Mourinho when Tottenham were, were fighting for first place. You know, when we was first place for the longest amount of time in, in the past hundred years and when we had these amazing results and when players like Harry Kane were putting in, you know, four assists a game and Son's getting four goals and whatnot, everyone was saying, wow, Mourinho's really found the, what he wants to do with Spurs and, and all this. Praising the hell out of him. That was awful. But then all of a sudden, when he's, he's doing bad, everyone's going, oh, Mourinho needs to go. He's, he's not good enough to play um, or, or manage Spurs, I should say. It's... What do you expect? I honestly, at this point, I don't believe any manager could come in and make Spurs not Spurs. Because what Spurs needs is more than a manager. It needs eight new players, and it's needed eight new players for so long now. And every time we get a few new players, what happens is we look like selling a couple of others, or we stop giving players a chance, and it just ruins the whole thing. And thankfully. We equalised, what was that, like the 80th minute? Eight, 89th or 88th minute, I should say. We're going to get a bit of crying on as well. Um, but a good example of that is Pochettino came in. He made two or three pretty crappy signings, but mainly for a low budget, got Ericsson, got Deli Alley, started giving Harry Kane a proper chance. You know, the list goes on, got Son, and now, the, you know, all them players combined are. are half a billion in total you know at, at their prime and then you look at Mourinho he's come in he got a player like Tangai and Dombele who he didn't buy had obviously no choice in but has turned him into a absolutely brilliant player one of the best midfielders in the league at the minute if he was playing for Barcelona everyone would praise him but because he's not no one does let's do a post-match interview even though it's the same questions every time and I know it sounds like a massive rant because it is but at the same time he's he's got players and he's bought players like Vinicius you know who has saved us Jesus they're a bit loud I mean all you have to do for these is do the same thing every time to go top right and at worst you're gonna knock it down a couple. Um, there we go. Easy as that. I don't go through them properly because they're boring. It's the same questions all the time. It really is. Oh, and the training every day thing. Yeah, that's working like a charm. Everyone's going up as quick as you can go. And so I just sim them now until the next game. Easy as that. But, uh, yeah. Bought um, Vinicius in. Played very well. Got us through a lot of the Europe games. He is a good player. He bought, you know, we've got Hoiberg. Amazing player. And this is thanks to Mourinho. No one thinks about this. This is all thanks to Mourinho. Gareth Bale, as far as reports say, wasn't Mourinho's choice. He didn't want him. But, you know, your boss comes in and... Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, boss comes in and, and says, look, no, we're getting him. It's look. I know it's a it's a rant. It is a rant, but it is what it is. And I'm just sick of I'm sick of Tottenham supporters having this this roller coaster of oh Mourinho's the best, and then oh I hate Mourinho. You know, um, this guy's still not been scouted for some reason. He's been scouting for like a month now. Um, right, let's have a look at a few on the list in terms of centre backs. I like the look of this guy. Um, He's 19 years old, six foot four. This dude's six foot seven. Jeez, and looks like all round decent. Ten mil. We are going to go in for him. At 19 years old, I'm reckon he's going to be around about 73, 74 OVR. We will. We'll offer just for straight 10 mil. They're not going to take out shortly, though. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm happy with that. I'm not even going to counter that. I'm just going to go straight for it on that price. I don't know what his wages are worth, so it is going to be kind of a stab in the dark here. Let's just have a look. 18,000 current wages. Let's see if we can get him on a rotation, because he is only 19. He's fine with that. Five years, again. 
absolutely fine with that. Hopefully we can get him. I tell you what, we'll try for we'll try for twenty thousand. No additional fees. They'll probably add additional fees. Twenty one thousand, two hundred thousand signing bonus, and after ten appearances, another two hundred thousand. Absolutely fine, mate. I'm I'm not going to be a stickler over a grand. Um, these two though can go now. I've got him. I've got him. Tanganga, Sanchez, um, Dyer. You know, I, I I've got that position covered. Now let's have a look at some of the ones that have been brought to my attention. Now 50 mil, right mid. I'll ask him to scout. Let's have a little look. 21 years old, 74 OVR. Let's do him as well. Usman Dembele, no, thank you. Hmm. I don't really know what it is I'm looking for either. I'm just kind of looking through and if any of these stats kind of stand out like his do, his really do, um then we'll have a look at it. And it's a lot of right sided, obviously because I've I've asked to scout the, the right mid, right wing, whatever. That is a position we do need a little bit of help on. So we'll scout them see what happens and we'll play our next game against Manchester City now we win this that is massive really really massive so let's get just just the best we can I'm going to get Deli Alley on he's already gone up one um, and what I also realized I because it's been so long since I played FIFA I completely forgot that with the plus six and all as you can see next place a Hoiberg's a plus five that means he's now playing as a well plus six so that would make him a an 87 OVR player right now which is amazing as you can see it knocks some of his stats up and and everything so you know we've got a an 87 OVR Deli Alley an 88 Bale a 90 something you know it, so it's it's very good very very good um yeah for this game I'm going to keep Regulon on. We're going to get Tanganga on the bench. And I think we'll give Doherty a chance to go there. Take Aurier off. And we will also get on... Oh, he was 75 OVR. Okay. Let's get him on instead of Roden. Roden on the actual... Uh, on the pitch instead of Sanchez. And then I think we'll probably put Neto on the bench just as a a kind of backup plan because he is a, is a half decent player without a doubt. And I also I really like Eric Dyer, you know. So I think I'm going to get Dyer on instead of Hoiberg, even though he's not better, you know, by no means. But you know, you got to try these things out, haven't you? He might absolutely surprise me with how he plays. But let's crack on into the game. Right, here we go. I'm I'm hoping to get a win here. It may be difficult. They have some excellent players in this game. Obviously, Aguero, De Bruyne, Sterling. The list goes on and on and on. And obviously, currently, if you're watching this, oh no, here we go. If you're watching this, uh, you know, while the league's still going on. Maybe Man City have already won it. It looks like they're pretty certain to win this year. Unless they start losing every game possible. But yeah, they've put in a massive, a massive performance. I think currently we've uh, the league's had 29 games. So not too many left. But again, I really can't see Man City losing this one now. So, you know, well done to them. They, they are an excellent team. People make fun of their, their history because they basically have none. Uh, but saying that, what they've done recently it can't be mistaken as anything other than, than, well, brilliant from Guardiola. Yes, they had a lot of money, and if you spend that much money, you expect to win. But I mean, that money's been more than paid back through Premier League, all the other cups combined. You know, it really is, really is fantastic. Bales up here though. Our first attack is absolutely sped past. I tried. To, to to cut in for no reason other than I thought it would look nice. Should have passed that one in really to Kane. I you know, is what it is. Let's try. I mean, they're going to have possession this game. I usually have a lot less possession anyway, but this is Man City. 
and they are going to pass this around like an absolute I don't even know an, an absolute I don't know passing team oh I thought that was going to be in good shot what are you serious why what happened here no, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think so. Where's this guy going? Bottom left? <laughs> of course. Of course. Oh man, I'm so annoyed. He put Doherty on. And then he does a Doherty on you. I, re I don't know what to say. Should it have been a penalty? Well, I don't know. Deli Ali's lost the ball onto Aguero. Sterling. Rodri. We can get this back. Aguero. Oh, that's a goal. Oh, God. Here we go. I'm not. You know what? I'm not that annoyed because it's only the first 20 minutes and there's a big chance to get back into the game. But at the same time, I'm a little bit worried that if I play like this for the next 20, then there's going to be issues. Right, can Deli Alley get it back in? Bale's through. Oh, are you kidding? Are you... Really? Neither one of them was a foul while on Bale. Nah, I'm checking that. Let me just... Uh, I know people don't care about this. Let me just check this. So Bale... Does his fancy fancy, gets it through his legs, gets tripped, okay, fair enough, maybe not. Oh, okay, he actually did get the ball. Now I look like an absolute idiot because I've said that it, you know, well, should have been a foul. Guess it's not. Squeaky squeaky sitting on my chair. Yeah, I mean, that was a bit of an ambitious pass, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Anyone want to go to hotels.com? Always good to get your. Uh, Buy your hotels off there. Let's um. I mean that's that's big from from wherever that was. I haven't actually got time to check. I mean it's up to Kane. There's no way I make any of them passes yet. They, but I think some was offside. Um, to my right was blocked as well. We're certainly getting back into it, sort of. Um. I also don't know what I think of this formation. It's a little bit lacklustre going forward with the two defensive mids, considering that, you know, defending isn't really my strong suit. It's more, well, neither's attacking actually. Nothing's really my my strong suit. I'm more of a, is that going to look cool when I score that goal kind of player? <laughs> oh, man, it's such a bad pass. Should have held it off. So we will, I think, maybe at half-time for still trailing 2-0, which seems like we will be. Maybe just go for a super, well not super attacking, but a lot more attacking. Uh, maybe two attacking mids, like I said I would, and then one defensive mid. Surely we've got this. Please. Thank you. Alright, okay. Okay. Are you? Are you kidding me? I don't know why Regulon looks like that. Are you, you, if he scores his hat-trick here, I'm going to be... That's down the middle. You have got to be kidding me. De Bruyne's got a hat-trick and it's not even half-time. We are... We're going to go two attacking mids. If I can actually find the formation. This will take me about 45 minutes to do now. Where is the... Is there not one that just has two attacking mids? I'm obviously overlooking it. I mean, that has kind of three, but they're still kind of wingers, aren't they? I mean, there's that one, but... Or maybe even two strikers. We can get Vinicius on. That might be a big help. We'll get two strikers, an attacking mid, two centre mids maybe? You know, we'll go with that. 
and then we'll have Kane we will take off Ali for Vinicius we're going to get Ndombele on and everyone else is fine for now but I'm actually going to take Doherty off Tanganga can play that right side I believe yep he can play right back um, can any of these play right back I don't think they can I'm going to save a save a substitution maybe by doing that so then we've not taken Dyer off Dyer can compensate on that right side I think we still will have one sub to make as well that math probably isn't working out for anyone else but in my head it seems right we, we need to get back into this man this is I mean I'm not stressed yet I'm, I'm pretty calm I'm surprisingly calm for some reason I knew this would happen okay make the pass make the fly. Oh, come on! Why are you making passes like that, man? What kind of a pass is that? Don't. Lovely, lovely. You see, Eric Dyer, permanent right back now. Brilliant pass. All right, let's just please pass before you get absolutely destroyed. Okay, I mean it's just the sheer amount of pressure that's being put on. Okay, pa pa pass, pass, I'm clicking the buttons, and you're just not passing, are you? And why not? I don't know. Alright, let's go back there, put the pass in. I'm so, I'm so, so happy that we got one goal. Oh, man. I was so certain that this was just going to just go through everyone. Good goal, though. I mean, what's that first goal of the season? What I find weird is Vinicius's face has been modelled in, and and Regulon's hasn't. Like Regulon looks like the most generic Tony Hawk pro skater character I have ever seen, but for some reason Vinicius, I mean, he's fully modelled. He's fully ready to go. I'm pretty sure Tanganga's done as well. I don't know. It's weird how they do it, but you know, hey, oh, here's what it is. I knew that was too heavy of a touch, but I mean we need two goals back. At this point, I don't think it really matters. I think at this point it's just all about just try and get some form of attack. Okay, I don't know what my plan was there. Can we switch this over here? No, we cannot. That's cool, that's cool. Completely expected to be fair, completely expected. Okay, this may be an issue. Good stop, good stop. Come on. That's offside. That's offside by mile. Oh man, it's so annoying as well. Guardiola is getting re mad. Damn it, he, I think he's got so stressed he's lost his hair. You know what I love about Pep Guardiola is he always, even when he's angry, he always just looks like a like a cool guy, you know. He just looks like he's just walked out of a pub half the time and he's just turned up at a football game, you know. He's always wearing such casual clothes and and he's always just, he just seems so nice. Here we go, Kane's on the ball. Kane somehow sped past someone, which is pretty impressive. Can we just get the shot on? Just get the shot on. The fact that Roden's in strike, you know, he, he's there ready to to lay in a 94th minute equaliser. Okay, let's turn that around. There's literally no support here. Ah, oh, you've got to be kidding me. It's times like that where you can't go for the first shot because there's like three people blocking you. So if you go for the shot, it's going to be pointless. So the only thing you've got to do is try to you know move it around the box and, and do something with it I'm yeah I'm not letting that one go to them let's just attempt to get a ball through oh what are you doing 
What are you doing? I, I thought the cross itself would be the bad bit, but I thought as long as I get something on it, then it's a goal. I mean, that could have got us right back into the game. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure if we don't get a goal by like 75 minutes, then this game's a complete loss. No, no foul. Come on now. Come on. Yeah, I knew that wasn't going to... Uh... Oh, it's, man, it's like the players don't have, have the urgency, you know? It's like you, you put in a tackle five minutes later, it makes the tackle. I swear to God. <sighs> regulon, 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 reg... Here we go, here we go. Oh, Loris, thank you. No, I... Are you kidding me, game? I wanted that thrown out to Bale. I wanted that thrown out to Bale. For some reason it does... Look at this, look, he catches it. I see Bale up there. I want to throw it overhead. For some reason it tries to, to gently... That's Loris gone. Um, man, oh man, oh man. I can't make any more changes that are going to help. May as well get Neto on for the lols, aren't we? I'm actually so frustrated, man. I had, I, I don't know what had gone wrong there, but my, I mean, my power bar and just my button presses said that that was going to bail. But the game said, no, 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 you're going to lose like an idiot. Ah, oh, man. It's so embarrassing. 4-1. It shouldn't be like this. I mean, to win the league, you need to be winning the big games, don't you? There's no point just winning against the little guys. It's like that. Silver's absolutely, absolutely mugging me off. That was a bad finish, to be fair. At least uh, Loris knows how to actually throw the ball. And then, just awful passing. No, don't, don't do it. He's got to come out for that. And oh, I'm done. Absolutely done. The choice here were bring the keeper out or let him get closer for a definite goal. It's ah oh man, oh man, oh man. It's really annoying. I don't don't really see any way back from here. I doubt we're going to put in four goals in, you know, like seven minutes. Just just the whole thing. Just for passing. I don't know if it's my tactics, the formation or what, but after this game, after this defeat, I'm definitely going back to the, the drawing board. We had a decent pre-season, but a loss like this shouldn't be happening. I think we might drop it to a three centre-backs, because it's clear that that was a nice shot. Um, it's clear that, like I say, defensively, don't matter if I, if I had eight, you know, centre backs. I don't think defensively you can stop a lot of what goes on. What if that makes it as a pass? I'll be a man. <laughs> what a pass! It's like a bicycle kick, cross map pass. Um, but yeah, offensively is I think the only thing we've got going for us currently. Um, and even that, there's just just no room for it. You know, we get up like this, and all I've got is is one player in the middle to kind of help out. You know, great, Harry Kane gets the goal. That's really going to help me out. Um, yeah, we're going to have to have a look at all the tactics and, and everything going forward. I think. Right, first of all, we are going to drop it to a free centre back because the choice are either free centre backs, uh, left wing, the uh, uh, left wing back and right wing back could work I guess you know we we could go with something like this but then again offensively we'll have more help on the wing less help just kind of through the middle it's nearly hiccup to my own heart out of my chest there or we can go three centre backs completely forget about the defence too much you know we can have a centre defending mid in there but then we have the ability to have, you know, two strikers, left mid, 
right mid and two centre mids. I'm pretty sure that is the one we're going to go for. Um, yeah, that is the one we're going to go for. And then let's get the players set in positions. I think Vinicius has more than earned his right to be to be a starter. Um, players like Regulon and players like Aurier, yeah, maybe not necessarily going to be as useful. Um, but I mean, just looking at it, I think we could make something work here. I'm always happy to get Aurier on in pretty much any position. I mean, his stats, apart from shooting, are, are pretty excellent in this game. So I think Roden deserves to be on. Um, don't really matter who goes on subs for now because they get changed every time. Tanganga, Roden, Sanchez in there, I think is pretty much the optimal for me right now. Um, don't know how to pronounce that. Obviously, all the players are going to get a chance anyway to see how they perform, what they like. Um, Hoiberg, defensive mid, I think. Instead of Matina, it's going to be La Celso and Dombele and Hoiberg. And then Bale on the right, Son on the left. Or instead of Bale, I might even give someone like Bergvine a chance or a new right mid a chance. Because Bale, he's definitely going after the season. I can't see him not dropping down. Uh, defensively, I think we go for... Um, I don't know. I would say something like pressure on heavy touch. Yeah, you know, we'll go with that. Offensively, let's go for... I mean, I like the fast build-up, but it's just not working. I'm certainly not a possession heavy. We'll try it on balance, see what that's sort of got going on. Um, all of this is fine. I mean, they're all all pretty much set as they are still, I believe. Oh, no, they may have been changed because we changed. Well, we'll try it standard, how the game likes it for now. And then we will see, after maybe a game or two, if this is not working, we can try other things. Um, I think to finish off the episode, just to completely round it out, we are going to make... I mean, I need one of them right mids. That's just kind of how it is. Um, and out of all of them, I mean, this one's been scouted. I'm just looking for pure speed. I mean, 82 to 92. You can get a, a kind of example of how quick we're going to be. I mean, Saar is, is ballistic, isn't he? He is absolutely speedy. So is this lad, to be fair. I mean, we can sign multiple. I haven't got an issue with that. Skill moves and weak foot doesn't matter anymore. I mean, this guy, in terms of traits, um, flare trait, speed dribbler, outside foot shot, early crosser. Yeah, I mean, Saar is actually kind of lacking on traits. I like the look of Somerville. Younger, still very fast, still easily trainable. I think we're going to go for him and Saar, because Saar, I believe, could play left side as well. Has decent skill moves already. It's less to train up. Um, and I am actually, actually, I am actually going to try and swap him, I think, for, if we can get him, maybe for Lamella. Seems like an odd deal. I like Lamella, but just in this game doesn't play well. So, maybe... Oh, okay. <laughs> he he do not want Lamella, he just wants for free mil. Yeah, that's, that's fine, mate. Yeah, I'll do that all day long. He uh, he looks like a decent young lad as well. I mean, for the speed alone, that's like five mils worth of player, isn't it? But maybe not. I know how the game works. If they're super young and they're not at least like 80 OVR, then they're worth next to nothing. They're, they're worth mere shillings. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> 69,000 bonus. We like to see it. I think I'm also going to, like I say, get Saar. Are you able to see what positions? Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, we can play strike as well as right wing. So it's really a choice between these two. Saar's a little bit older, but a lot quicker. In terms of, I mean, what's his attack like? Finishing 71. Finishing 70 to 80. We go for Saar don't know how high in terms of OVR he's going to be 
because obviously I want to keep to only getting, what did I say, one player that's over that threshold and I don't think I've got that yet. Um, swap any players, I don't know what he's worth either. I mean if we're going for 20 mil and I fend them I'm gonna be annoyed. Deli Alley, yeah there's no chance of that happening. Uh remove that guy, it throws new transfer fee. We'll, we'll try for maybe 26 mil. 29 mil, you know what I'll go for it. He's gonna be our our biggest signing I think by a mile. Hopefully He's gonna be worth it. I just, I just need that depth. You know, Harry Kane's final, but when it's 75 minutes into the game, Harry Kane's tired. Vinicius is gonna be tired. If I can bring this guy on in like a, a striking position or a right wing position, that's gonna be an absolute lifesaver. And someone like Zaha as well. Um, you know, could be good. Maybe getting fairly cheap. We'll have to take a look at that actually. Um, this is going easy. Wage, I don't know. I don't want to offer way too high, which I probably am going to. 60,000, no. We'll always bring that down in uh, a couple of weeks. Right, let's finish off the episode. Let's have a look at what these players are actually got going for them. Okay, that's 67 OVR. We can put them on a development plan next episode. Acceleration, though, and sprint speed, absolutely mad. I think we could train this guy up. I mean, if we train him up in shooting, because again, he's so young. If by the time he hits like 19, 20 years old, his shooting's around about 80, he could be another striker as well. Saar, as always, pretty decent. So, uh, yeah. That's what's going to round off of this episode, guys. If you enjoyed, you want to stay up to date, you want to see what's going on in the world of the Tottenham Road to Glory event, again, feel free to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.